So I promised some new videos on uh, RMV7 and RMV8, and we'll get to those as soon as I've got my recording setup uh, sort of rebuilt here in the new office. Uh, but in the meantime, here's a television, and here is a quick video on faster addition. So the big problem with addition uh, is that it is dependent on the number of bits you have. If you have a four bit counter, you're adding numbers, uh, it'll take four gate delays at least to get your carry all the way from your first bit all the way to the last bit. Uh, you're gonna be carrying in from bit to bit uh, and that carry has to ripple from one bit slice to another. If you have a really large adder, that ripple carry will add up over and over and over again and you'll get a very slow process. Uh, we know from Amdahl's law, and we'll get to parallel computing later in the, in the, uh, in the series, uh, we know that if you can speed up a portion of your process, that will make your entire system faster. But if there's a portion of your process that can't be sped up, that will make your entire system limited to the speed of that process. Addition is one of those processes. If we use a regular adder as we built it in the system, where the carry ripples from one box to the next, then for a really large adder, like a 64-bit adder, or 128-bit adder even, it will take an enormous amount of time compared to all the other things that are happening uh, before you get your addition result. And addition is one of those things we're gonna be doing all the time. Uh, we measure the speed of high performance computing uh, based on floating point operations per second flops. Uh, and if you can increase, and th those are usually additions, floating point additions. Um, and so if you can increase the speed of your floating point additions, you can increase the performance of your entire machine. So we're gonna look at now a new process uh, for doing addition, which recognizes that we should be able to generate the result of an addition in three gate delays. That is the theoretical best result. And we know this, right? From the regular design process we used for canonical forms, any combinational logic can be generated in three gate delays. Um, you know, a, a not maybe, and then an and, a bunch of ands, and then an or. Um, we know that addition is combinational because it doesn't matter what you do, two plus two is always equal to four. The answer is always a combination of the inputs. There are no states involved, there's no memory involved. Addition is combinational. So if we can get closer to that theoretical limit, then we can make a faster adder. Now, the other thing we could do is we can build lookup tables. And for some of the really common additions, like two plus two equals four, we will have lookup tables. Uh, but there, for a 64-bit machine, there are, well, what's two to the 64? It's two to the six, which is, uh, quintillion, something like that, and two to the four is 16. So 16 quintillion possible numbers in each number represented in a 64-bit number. Um, and when we add two of them together, that's, that's that many times that many again, 128, two to the 128 possibilities. Um, that's too many to build into a lookup table. And so we are going to create a system called carry look ahead. We're gonna design some logic, recognizing some relationships between carry in and carry out in a particular bit slice and trying to then generate the result of an addition at that bit slice in as few gate delays as possible and primarily not waiting for the carry from the previous bit slice. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remember what ripple carry adder looks like. When we start with two numbers, here we're gonna have five plus 13. Uh, we're gonna start with two numbers and then we're going to add them together. Each bit slice depends on the carry in from the previous bit slice. So first we're gonna say one plus one is two, which is zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one. Then at that point, we can generate the next result here. Zero plus zero is zero, carry into one gives us a one. Now the next one is one plus one is gonna be zero, carry the one. There's a zero here, which we had to wait for, right? We had to wait till this was done, then this was done, then we wait for this, one plus one is zero, carry the one. And now we have one plus zero, which normally would be one, but because we've got to carry in, now it's two, which is zero, carry the one. And we get 16 plus two is 18, which is what we expect. And so this is our traditional ripple carry process. The carry ripples from full adder to full adder, and we have to wait for all of the previous carries to be generated before we can proceed. But we know we don't have to. We know that theoretically we should be able to do this far faster. So we're gonna look at this stuff. We're gonna see if we can identify some 
uh, optimizations that we can do. And we start with the full adder expressions for each bit slice. The sum, if we recall, is just exclusive or of all the inputs, x, exclusive or y, exclusive or carry in. And the carry out is going to be either xi and yi, or xi and carry in, or xy or yi and carry in. If any two of those three inputs for the full adder are a one, then we will have the carry out. And this should be the beginning of some recognition that maybe we can optimize this a little bit. Carry out is going to be the carry in for the previous next full adder, right? Carry out of i is carry in of i plus one. So we're going to rename that so we only have carry. We're talking about the carry between two bit slices instead of the carry out of one and the carry in of the other. So the i carry, or the i plus first carry, is going to be x i y i, x i c i, y i c i. So it's either the two inputs are one, or one or the other of the inputs is one with the carry being one. And we can simplify that here. So either the two inputs are both one together, or one or the other of them is one, plus there's a carry. Right? Those are the circumstances where we're going to get two or three as the answer. And when we get two or three as the answer to a bit slice, we have to carry to the next slice. Right? So both of these take only one gate delay, obviously. Right? This is an AND gate, that's an OR gate. It's this CI that takes the time, because this CI we have to wait all the way from the previous, from even from the beginning, before we can figure out what the carry in to that bit slice is. But already we have a term that is independent of that, right? If both of the inputs are one, we don't care what the rest of this is. We know that the carry out is gonna be one. We don't even have to wait, because we know we're guaranteed that the carry out is one. Now, if, we, if these are both, if one or the other of these is zero, right, three other possibilities. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. In all of those cases, we have to check. But 1, 1, we don't have to check. So we already have some optimization, even just by looking at these expressions. So let's have a look at what, takes, what it takes to generate the carry, and we'll see if we can find more further optimizations. So starting from the least significant bit, we can see what the carry actually is. Carry 1, the first carry, the carry out of the first bit, the carry into the second bit, is x0, y0, or x0, or y0 times the carry in from that first bit. But we know the carry in from the first bit is 0, uh, because we're adding two numbers and there is no carry in. Now there might be, in certain circumstances, if we're using a subtractor and we're carrying in a 1 to flip the bits and add 1, or if we're using a, an adder in the context of a larger structure. But let's start from the assumption that we're using an adder that's starting at bit 0, which means our carry is just x0, y0. The only situation where we'll have a carry out is when they're both one. Otherwise, we won't have a carry out. The second bit is going to be the carry, fun the carry function, right? x1, y1, or x1, or y1, c1. But c1, we know, is x0, y0, is that. And again, we don't have any carry in here. We're not waiting. These are all functions of the inputs to those bit slices. And we can do the same thing again. We can say C3 is going to be X2, Y2, or X1, Y1 times C2, which is this whole thing. And if you can see, it gets large, but you can also see that it can be done in constant time rather than N time, right? We don't have to make the amount of time it takes get bigger every time we add another bit slice. All of these values that are in this expression depend only on the inputs to the entire adder, not on the carry rippling through. So we're going to actually rename these expressions because we have these two things that we're recognizing, this x1, y1, and this x1, or y1. We brought those in from here, x1, y1, x1, or y1. We're going to rename these because they have certain functionality in the circuit that we're going to produce. This x1, y1 is going to be called carry generate and you might already be able to guess why we're gonna call this carry generate. And this X1 or Y1 is gonna be called carry propagate. And again, you may already be able to guess why we're calling this carry, prop carry propagate. And the important thing is neither depends on the carry in from previous bits. These both can be generated in a single gate delay from the inputs to the adder at any bit slice. So carry generate is gonna start a carry regardless of the other inputs. It's gonna say, I don't care what happened before, I know that there has to be a carry out of this bit slice, right? And that happens when, where are we here? That happens when both of the inputs are one. We know there has to be a carry out. So we call that carry generate. 
carry propagate says there will be a carry out of this bit slice if there was a carry into this bit slice. And that's this one, x1 or y1, xi or yi. Because in this case, if the carry in is one, the carry out will be one. If the carry in is zero, the carry out will be zero. And so we propagate a carry that was true from a previous bit slice, but if there is no carry in, we're not gonna have a carry out. Now that feels like we still have to be dependent on carry, but you'll see once we actually put this into the mathematics that we can get rid of carry from the expression entirely. So in general, we see this function, right? This is the regular carry function. This will generate a new carry in, and this will propagate a previous carry in. But this carry in can be looked at from the previous propagate. So uh, generate says if they're both one, we always carry out. Propagate says if one or the other of them are one, we'll carry out only if there was a carry in generated before or propagated from a previous bit slice. So we're going to generate in some places, and in some places we're going to propagate that generated uh, carry. But in all cases, we're going to be able to do it in a single um, set of gate delays. So now we're going to replace these functions here, x, x, y, and x or y. We're going to replace them by g for generate and p for propagate. So now the first carry is just generate plus propagate from carry zero. And again, we already know that that's zero. Second carry is generate or propagate from carry one, which is the same as generate or propagate from generate from zero or propagate from zero. Okay. The third one, or in general, the ith one, is going to be generate here, or propagate from the previous one, or propagate from a propagation of the previous one, or propagate from a propagation from a propagation from a propagation from a propagation, blah, 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 from a previous one, all the way down to zero. And if you, now this, again, feels complicated, and it feels like there's a lot going on, and all of these things feel like I'm moving from bit slice to bit slice, but I'm really not, because each of these propagates can be done in a single bit slice, and these are all anded together, so that can be done again in a single uh, gate delay. So propagate in a gate delay, generate in a gate delay, and those together in a gate delay. So this whole thing, even though it feels like I'm propagating from a previous, from a previous, from a previous, in fact, this happens in two gate delays. A bunch of ors and an and. And that will give me the carry in to decide whether or not I have a carry at that bit slice. Because I still need to know whether I'm carrying into this bit slice so that I can do the full addition at that bit slice. But the point of this is even as complicated as this is, I can generate the carry in two gate delays. Okay? So it's going to require a ton of hardware, but that hardware can generate the carry signal in two gate delays, which means I can do the entire addition in constant time instead of in order n time. It's guaranteed to execute in four gate delays. This whole thing, right? It takes two gate delays to generate the carry, right? From propagate and generate. And then the sum only takes one more gate delay, right? Because the sum is just a bunch of exclusive ors that we knew at the beginning. So the whole thing generates in four gate delays. Now it's huge. Here's the beginning of this circuit. So this is what the sort of bit slice of the carry look ahead adder looks like. Instead of a carry now, what we have is a propagate and a generate. So this box is the carry look ahead adder bit slice. We carry in, we have X and Y in, but then we propagate and generate out. And then the propagate and generate, we're gonna combine together for the next carry in, as we'll see in a minute. There's additional hardware required for this to get from propagate and generate back to carry for the next bit slice. But this hardware, very simple. I've got two exclusive ORs here because the logic simplification software that I'm using doesn't allow me to do three input exclusive ORs, but you can do this in one three input exclusive OR, uh, and then you have the, the content from the propagate and generate to generate the new carry, then from another bit slice. So the whole thing can be done in three gate delays, which is amazing. So we're gonna connect all this stuff together to create a four bit carry look ahead adder, and you'll see why this gets complicated quickly we're gonna need a lot of additional logic to convert from our propagate and generate to the new carry. So um, let's just look at the hardware. So we can look at this slide in a minute. Uh, hardware is constructed recursively. We're gonna duplicate that and then build the logic for the next one. And a 64-bit adder is gonna have a hundreds and hundreds of new gates, but what we're doing is we're trading off circuit complexity for speed, right? We can do this in four gate delays. And it's okay to spend a lot of, a lot of 
chip space on this kind of complexity if I can speed up every single floating point operation that we do, which is the whole point of this. This is what the hardware looks like. So we've got a regular carry look ahead adder here that starts with a carry in. Now again, for the basic one, this is probably gonna be zero, but there are some circumstances where we might carry something else in. Then we're gonna propagate and generate, and we're gonna put that up to a bus, a whole bunch of wires across the top. And then from there, we're going to construct a process whereby we either generate a new carry, that's this G, or we propagate from a previous carry, that's this AND, from the propagation of the previous carry. Or those together, because either we generate a new carry or we propagate a previous carry, that's our new carry. Now the propagate and generate from the next bit slice go back into the bus, and this just keeps growing and growing every bit slice we have. So 64 bit, we're gonna have 128 lines on this bus. 64 propagates, 64 generates. And each one of those is gonna be combined in this way, right? An AND gate for, uh, well, first of all, we're gonna either generate a new carry, or we're gonna propagate the previous carry, right? Or we're gonna, or sorry, propagate the previous generate. So this is a generate here that we propagate. Or this is another generate that we propagate a propagate. Or we propagate the propagate the propagate of the original carry in. So at each bit slice, we're gonna have a big bank of AND gates. Those AND gates are gonna either propagate the carry from the previous bit, or propagate twice from the bit before, or propagate three times from the bit before. You can see why we call this a, an incremental or a recursive hardware construction, right? Each bit slice contains additional hardware that combines the propagate and generate from previous bit slices. But the point is that the whole thing can be done in one gate delay, two gate delay, three gate delay. And that gives us the complete, and this was the theoretical best that we could do, right? Because we know that theoretically any logic circuit can be done at best in three gate delays, some faster if they're really simple, but three gate delays is the maximal delay that we'll ever have, the, the slowest any combination logic will ever be, and this does this in three gate delays. So this is going to be the, the new way to build an adder, and it is going to give us the solution to any addition problem in as fast as it's possible to do. Uh, and this is gonna give us an amazing result. So that's the carry look ahead adder. Um, really interesting to build. I don't encourage you to actually build a 64-bit carry look ahead adder because it's very complicated, uh, but it's nice to know theoretically that addition will not be the thing that slows us down when we're getting into building our larger, complicated parallel systems.